Welcome to the fourth and final lesson in the Peace First Digital Mentor Training, setting you up for success. We've spent a lot of time discussing the history and mission of the program and the tenets of mentoring and youth development. We've also introduced the various mentoring roles in the Peace First community. To round out our training, we'd like to continue talking about what your mentoring relationship will look like. In order to set you up for success, we will walk through common roadblocks in the Peace First Challenge. We will also cover policy and procedures surrounding emergency circumstances and risk management. We will spend time talking about the importance of cultural competency in a successful mentoring relationship. We will also discuss the ongoing support you as a mentor will be able to access. We will round out this lesson and our training, as always, with a couple of discussion activities. It would be awesome if your group encounters absolutely no problems or setbacks during their peacemaking journey. It's a beautiful dream, but an unlikely reality. The peacemaking journey is a process that takes considerable dedication and motivation. Hitting a couple of snags is understandable, and having an idea of potential bumps may help you and your group smooth them out faster and more efficiently. We will spend the next couple of slides walking through common scenarios and ways you can keep your project group on track while still maintaining the Peace First standards and expectations. When you are accepted and matched as a project coach, you may be confused about how to begin your mentoring relationship. You can turn to the Welcome Journey Match Initiation Guide at any time for tips and instructions. It may also ease your mind to remember that you will receive updates and instructions from the Peace First team about initiating your match and keeping the group focused and moving forward. Additionally, visit the young person or team's project page. Look at the idea storm section. Is there any tool that you can suggest they use in order to help them understand their injustice better? Then send them a link to the appropriate tool from the tools page. You might also pose some questions to help them reflect deeper on their injustice or their insight to ensure that their insight and their suggested solution are rooted in compassion. Also, is there a Peace First fellow, content expert, or other community member that could provide input into the group's project? No matter what steps you take to initiate your match, it's important to never tell a young person what to do or to imply or say that their idea isn't very strong. Perhaps you're a couple of weeks or months into your match and it's been several days since one of your mentees accessed the Peace First Challenge site. You can start addressing this absence by reaching out to your youth with a specific question related to their project. For example, have you completed X yet? Or how is working on X going? You can also check in with other young people on the project team. Do not attempt to find your mentee on social media or directly email or call your mentee. In the case of a significant event happening in your life, you may be required to take a brief leave of up to one month from mentoring. Should this happen, notify Peace First staff as soon as possible. Begin to consult staff in order to find another project coach who could support your team during your absence. Maybe you know of another project coach who would be a good fit to support your team. If so, feel free to share this information with the Peace First staff who will make the final decision about how to best support your team in your absence. As you prepare for your absence, it's important to keep your mentees notified. Do not stop communicating with your project team. However, it's also important not to convey unnecessary worry or concern to your mentee when you explain your absence. As we discussed, the peacemaking journey takes sustained interest and commitment in order to end successfully. Even the most passionate and focused groups slip up from time to time. After each slip, it's important to reflect and regroup. What caused the slip? How can the group be more secure going forward? The following scenarios will prepare you for these conversations. Detail is an important part of choosing an injustice, developing a compassionate insight, and forming and executing a peacemaking plan. If you have concerns about the amount of detail in your group's peacemaking plan, here are some places to begin addressing those concerns. Look at the resources and discussions they've already found and held. Are there questions you can ask that will help them clarify what they're working on? For example, if they're trying to plan a fundraising event, you may ask if they have experience fundraising or what particular type of help they need to create and host their event. You can always turn to the toolkit. Has your group created specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goals? If you think something is missing, encourage your group to revisit the SMART Goals tool. 
As you work with your project team, you may find that the insight your young person has created doesn't feel complete or grounded in compassion. Maybe they wrote their insight too quickly and the result is a muddy focus. The team might be working on a superficial level and thus isn't addressing the root problem. Or perhaps the root cause they're working on doesn't really have anything to do with their chosen injustice. Maybe the team identified an inconvenience and not an injustice. If there are any red flags about their insight, it resorts to violence, blaming, or hate, please use the contact form to notify the Peace First manager. Problems with the compassionate insight is no reason to completely throw in the towel. In fact, it's important that, as a project coach or a community Sherpa, you never tell a young person their ideas are bad or that you take over their project and rewrite aspects of it. Instead, here are some steps to take and suggestions to make. Urge your group to revisit the Peacemaking Toolkit and, in particular, the Understand Tools. These activities were created in order to guide youth deeper into their injustices. Make sure youth are demonstrating compassion, courage, and collaboration. Encourage your group to think about the people who are affected by the injustice they are addressing. Consider asking them these questions. How did you learn more about them, and how were they impacted, and how did they feel? What did you learn? Youth should also consider how they will continue to address their injustice, even when there is risk involved. And they should also include outside groups and individuals when designing, carrying out, and or expanding their project. Working with others will make their project stronger. To sort out the difference between an injustice and an inconvenience, have your team refer back to a list of example insights on the Peace First Challenge site and ask what they notice about the insights. After looking at the example insights, would they change their insight? What might they do differently? Are you worried your group hasn't included enough steps in their project because the success of the project is dependent on one event? Here are some reactions to consider. Encourage the group to revisit their project plan and goals. Encourage them to think about including a few more steps to gauge if they're moving in the right direction. Does the group have a set of indicators that can show that their project is moving in the right direction? These can be things they can count, quantitative, or descriptions of changes, qualitative. For example, if they've planned an event to address bullying, the number of attendees to the event, the change in perception from bullies, kids with disabilities feel respected and included, and bullies feel more included in the school community. Whatever your response, it's imperative that you don't tell them what to do to fix their project. Your project team may experience serious setbacks that make them question completing their project. It's important to listen to their thoughts and concerns and not blindly encourage their participation. If the team planned an event that was poorly attended and they think it indicates that they should stop their project, congratulate the group on putting together the event and express your empathy for how they are feeling. Point them to the other examples on the Peace First Challenge site of projects and events that have not gone the way they were planned, and maybe tap a Peace First fellow to share their stories. Encourage the group to look for what they have learned in the process by completing the team reflection. Ask the team if they're interested in continuing with their project or with starting a new one. If they continue with their project or create a new one, congratulate them for sticking with their idea. If they decide to end their project, congratulate them for the progress they have made and encourage each member to complete the individual reflection. Don't tell them to keep going, but follow their lead and support them in making a sound decision. As you may recall from our look through the Peacemaking Toolkit in Lesson 1, there are two activities to help your team reflect upon their journey. The Team Reflection Tool asks your group to compare the group's effectiveness at the beginning of the challenge to their effectiveness at the end of the challenge, or at the point where they chose to end the challenge. They will answer and discuss questions about what changed, what went well, and what they would do differently in the future. The second reflection tool is the Individual Reflection. It uses many of the same strategies as the Team Reflection. Invite youth in your group to discuss their individual reflections with each other or with others in the Peace First community to show how much they have grown as peacemakers. We hope that the course of your mentoring relationship in the Peace First community is smooth and emergency free. However, in the event that you do encounter emergency situations, it's important that you know where to turn and who to talk to. If you ever believe or suspect that your young person or members of the project team may have plans to hurt themselves or others, call the Peace First office immediately 
at 617-261-3833 and ask for the program manager. Business hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If your emergency is outside of business hours, please call as soon as the office opens. Additionally, you may want to check out the helpful resources page on the challenge site, which has contact information for organizations you may find helpful to talk to, particularly if the Peace First office isn't open. Whatever emergency situation may arise, it's important for you to remember that you are not alone. You are not responsible for handling a youth in crisis on your own. The Peace First team is always available. If you notice inappropriate behavior on the site, for example, someone asking for personal information, someone trying to meet up in person, someone using aggressive language, someone using abusive language, fill out the contact form to let the Peace First manager know what's going on. As always, if you feel there is imminent danger, please contact the Peace First team immediately at 617-261-3833. While some mentoring programs prefer to match children and young people with mentors who come from similar cultural backgrounds, that's not necessarily the case in a Peace First mentoring match. Chances are you will work with a young person or group of young people from a background different than yours. Because of these potential differences, we will now take some time to explore cultural competency. To begin, let's define culture. Culture, in a broad sense, is the underlying fabric that holds together a person's world. Research tells us that groups form a culture through society's major institutions. These cultural institutions consist of the big structures that determine what we believe, how we behave, and how we live. Institutions help convey society's rules or standards, both explicitly and implicitly. The ten cultural institutions include government, politics, and law, financial and corporate, health and medicine, media, entertainment, and the arts, peers and community, military, social services and prison, education, religion, and family. As we continue through lesson four, begin thinking about the institutions that have had the biggest impact on your life. The 10 cultural institutions will appear again in our discussion activities. A generation is a cohort of individuals born and living around the same time. The generations possess divining characteristics that separate them from one another. These differences include a cohort's common history, view of communication and technology, motivation, and priorities while balancing work and personal life. Historical events and similarities in upbringing define and reinforce generations. Typically, 50 to 20 years makes a generation, from the time a new wave of young people is born until they enter the workforce and build a family beyond their own family of origin. The five current major generations are the Silent Generation, Baby Boomers, Generation X, Millennials, and Centennials. These generations are defined by political and world events like World War II, the Korean and Vietnam Wars, space travel, Watergate, the War on Drugs, the Challenger and Columbia Space Disasters, Columbine, and 9-11. Each generation has different relationships with technology and communication that impact their work and relationship styles. All of that being said, the majority of youth you will work with during the Peace First Challenge are centennials. While not old enough to have an impact on the workforce, they are a sizable group with influence. Roughly 25.9% of the world's population is classified as centennials, and 60% of them want to impact the world through their work, as opposed to only 39% of millennials and they're active, with almost 30% of them dedicating time to volunteer work. Finally, the Peace First Challenge seems ready-made for this group, in which 51% of them identify world peace as what defines a better world to them. Youth culture plays an important part in every generation. As we've learned throughout the four lessons of this training, youth is a time of great discovery and change. Throughout the generations, youth are natural change makers. They advocate for their beliefs and are willing to stand up in the face of tyranny and oppression. Help support the current generation to become the peacemaking generation, as they use courage, compassion, and collaboration to solve problems in their communities, respect their ideas, and their autonomy. 
Mentors and mentees who come from different ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds will find open communication to be a significant factor in the success of their relationship. Mentoring with Peace First is not an experience in isolation. On the contrary, Peace First mentors have constant access to a strong support network. Mentors receive periodic newsletters and participate in webinars. There will be an ongoing mentor-only discussion group on the challenge site for you to engage in. Peace First will gather program feedback from mentors every six months, and mentors are always welcome and encouraged to reach out to Peace First staff at any time with questions, comments, or concerns. Our final training presentation was packed with important information. We've walked through some common communication roadblocks. You've heard what to do and who to call in case of an emergency. We discussed the importance of cultural competency to the success of your match and we went over the support network you can turn to in times of confusion or success. Now we will move on to this lesson's discussion activities. The discussion activities for Lesson 4 center on reflection. In the first activity, reflect upon the most important cultural institutions in your life. Has government played a large part? Religion? Family? Education? Choose five institutions and share the role they play or played in your life. In the second activity, you will reflect upon the peacemaking journey you've taken throughout training. How did your plan play out? Was it successful? What would you change? How do you think this experience helped prepare you to mentor youth completing the Peace First Challenge? The final activity of this lesson and of the training will require personal reflection. You've made it to the end of training. Where do you want to go from here? You understand the challenge, the commitment of both time and emotion. Are you still interested in mentoring? There are no right or wrong answers in the reflection. What matters is honesty. Have questions about this lesson or the Peace First Challenge? Reach out to a member of the Peace First team at pfchallenge at peacefirst.org.